Okay, this short video today is going to look at the redistribution of blood flow in the human body during exercise. Now, before we talk about exercise and the effect of blood flow, we're going to look at what the percentage of blood flow is at rest. And as you can see in front of you, there is a bar graph showing the distribution of blood around the human body. Now, as you can see, it's relatively um, matched out and evened out across the seven areas of the human body. Okay, the brain, liver, kidneys and muscles being the areas where a greater blood supply is delivered and then the bone marrow, heart and skin being the lesser areas. Okay, so that's what a percentage flow looks like at rest and now we're going to look at what it looks like during exercise. Okay, so during exercise as you can see there's a significant difference in percentage of blood flow and where it's traveling to in the body now unsurprisingly okay unsurprisingly the largest um, percentage of where the blood flow goes is the muscles okay and obviously when performing particular actions such as football rugby games activities or any physical activity where there's gross muscle movement then obviously the muscles need a supply of oxygen in order for them to perform effectively. Now, what we're going to look at now is how this redistribution of blood flow occurs and why it occurs. And a little bit later in the video, we'll look at an exam question with a, an answer. Okay, so why does this occur? Well, it occurs due to something called vasodilation. Okay, vasodilation is the process by which the blood vessels in the body relax and widen, allowing for greater blood flow. Um, one of the main triggers of vasodilation is nitric oxide, which can be found on the inner liner of the artery walls, but even before that, the, the baroreceptors, which can be found in the, uh, the aortic arch above the heart, uh, is where the trigger comes from. What that role of the baroreceptor is, is to trigger or to um, understand where there's uh, irregular irregularities in blood pressure within the body and the baroreceptor then sends a message to the brain and the brain then sends a message to the arteries and then the nitric oxide works by relaxing the muscles which allows the muscles to then widen. Therefore, anything that increases Nitric oxide production in the body will also increase vasodilation. So nitric oxide for the body is a positive, and I'll go on to a little bit of that later on. Okay, so from an athlete's perspective, vasodilation allows for an increase in oxygen and nutrient delivery within the body, allowing for greater energy production for the muscles. Okay, so vasodilation also helps improve the removal uh, of carbolic waste products from the muscles, like lactic acid and ammonia that contribute to muscle fatigue and failure. Okay, so a little bit further as well, um, there's, there's other areas how the, the athlete would benefit from vasodilation, and that's, and I'll just give you a few of them now. So increased aerobic energy production, okay, so a reduction of lactic acid, which is what I've said slows muscles down, the ability for them to contract and work effectively. Increased training capacity, uh, increased lactic threshold, Okay, so lactic threshold being the, the threshold where lactic acid starts to um, seek out into the body. Improved muscle group pump. Okay, so if you're a bodybuilder, then if you've got good vasodilation, then you get a good pump within your training. Um, and, and faster recovery. Okay, we know as an athlete that um, recovery is absolutely vital for, for, for training and, and performance and getting back out there and performing as you can. Okay, so we're now going to look at a question, an exam question, a nine mark question, and that being evaluate to the extent to which the redistribution of blood flow is necessary during a game of hockey. Now, I've put a few prompts on there which can allow you to um, get a little bit of an idea. For one, I've highlighted here, as you can see, um, what we mean by evaluate, okay, what we mean by hockey. Obviously, I know people know what hockey is, but in terms of it's an aerobic activity and why oxygen is needed during activity. And the main two points are these two here. So redistribution of blood flow, what actually is it? And then as you can see here at the side, the key vocabulary 
which is needed or are needed to to improve and, and, and gain maximum or high marks within this question. So like I said, just a, a few key terms which I may go over. So vasodilation, which I've said, vasoconstriction, okay, which is the narrowing of the artery, so it's the opposite effect to what we've been talking about. Um, barrel receptors we've mentioned, which is in the um, aortic arch. Uh, I've talked about gross motor skills because obviously hockey been using large muscle groups. And then basically, why is this necessary for hockey? Well, as you can see here, if this doesn't occur and muscles don't get a supply of oxygen, fatigue will start um, coming into play. And obviously that's going to have a disadvantage or an um, ill effect on performance. Muscles don't contract as well. They become fatigued and the player may slow down. And this is all about energy. The reason we need vasodilation to occur and why we need reduced flow of blood to the muscles is to provide energy for the body to work. So I'm also going to show you as well on the next page, just flick over an example of a way to go about answering the question. So you can have a little look at that and digest it. And my advice would be for you to read it, look at the key terms, have a go at answering the question using the key terms, have a go at answering or rewording this, this answer which I've done or having a go without looking at anything. Thank you for listening.